booted by him. How do you think this Labour government and Keir Starmer as Prime Minister are doing so far? Well, it's interesting that they've wheeled out the recycled Blairite pack that aside, and they always wheel him out when they've got a problem. Mm. Um, there's been issues where I think Keir Starmer has shown poor judgment. He didn't seem to understand that a man on £150,000 a year as leader of the opposition, it would look bad if he was getting a millionaire to pay through his glasses and his suit. He didn't seem to understand. Maybe if he'd done more door knocking for the Labour Party, didn't understand of all the people to take money off, not pensioners. For decades, the Labour Party has been the political equivalent of a family dinner gone wrong. Everyone's meant to be on the same side, but somehow, there's always a fight. The latest drama between Diane Abbott and Keir Starmer is no exception. This time, the sparks are flying over winter fuel cuts. But it's not just about money or policy. It's a full-blown showdown over what Labour really stands for. Abbott isn't pulling any punches, accusing Starmer of botching it big time by cutting the universal £300 winter fuel allowance for most pensioners. She's calling it a political misstep, and honestly, she's not alone. People are furious. With energy prices through the roof and pensioners already struggling, this move feels like kicking someone when they're down. Starmer, on the other hand, seems to think he's playing 4D chess. In his mind, scraping the allowance is about reallocating resources more effectively. But Abbott, and let's face it, plenty of others, see this as yet another example of him drifting away from Labour's roots. You know the party that's supposed to have the backs of working-class people. Abbott has gone so far as to say Starmer is out of touch with Labour's core voters. And honestly, it's hard to argue when you look at the backlash. For many, this isn't just about fuel cuts. It's about whether Labour still knows what it's fighting for. This kind of infighting isn't new, but it's getting harder to ignore. Starmer's been trying to rebrand Labour as a party that can win elections, but in doing so, he's alienating some of the party's most loyal supporters, and even a few of its MPs. Abbott's critique is loud and public, but she's not the only one raising eyebrows. From grassroots activists to backbenchers, there's a growing sense that Starmer's vision of labor is more about optics than substance. And that's a problem when your party's whole identity is built on fighting for the underdog. What makes this even messier is the timing. Winter is coming, literally, and the cost of living crisis isn't getting any better. Pensioners are already struggling to heat their homes, and now they're being told that help is being taken away. Abbott's argument is simple. Cutting support at a time like this isn't just bad politics, it's cruel. Starmer, meanwhile, is doubling down, insisting that tough decisions are necessary to rebuild the economy. But is it really rebuilding if you're leaving some of the most vulnerable people out in the cold? Abbott's outburst has thrown fuel on an already roaring fire within labor. The party's been walking a tightrope for years, trying to balance modernization with its traditional values. But with every controversial decision, that balance seems to tip further in one direction. And let's be real, this isn't just about Starmer or Abbott. It's about a party that's been fighting itself for decades with no clear end in sight. Whether it's over Brexit, austerity, or now winter fuel cuts, labor always seems to be at war with itself. And while internal debates can be healthy, there's a fine line between constructive criticism and full-blown chaos. Starmer's supporters argue that his decisions, however unpopular, are necessary to make Labour electable again. They point to years of Tory dominance, and argue that the party needs to evolve to stand a chance. But evolution doesn't have to mean abandoning your roots. Abbott's criticisms resonate because they tap into a real fear among Labour's base, that in trying to win over new voters, the party is leaving its old ones behind. Abbott hasn't just gone after Starmer's policies, She's taken a swipe at him personally, and let's be honest, it's brutal. In a BBC interview, she called out his decision to accept pricey suits and designer glasses as gifts from millionaire Lord Waheed Ali. Now, for someone pulling in over £140,000 a year, you'd think he could buy his own wardrobe, right? But Abbott went further, saying this kind of stuff makes Starmer look out of touch with everyday people. And she's not wrong. At a time when pensioners are struggling to keep the heat on, the optics of accepting luxury gifts just don't sit well. Abbott didn't mince words, she called it privilege and hypocrisy, plain and simple. 
And honestly, it's a tough argument to counter. For pensioners who've been hit hard by inflation and soaring energy bills, this feels like a slap in the face. These are people who've relied on labor as their safety net for decades, and now they're looking at a leader who seems more interested in schmoozing with millionaires than fighting for their corner. It's not a great look, and Abbott's calling it like she sees it. What makes this hit harder is that it's not just about the suits or glasses. It's about what they represent. To a lot of people, this is symbolic of a labor party that's lost its way. Abbott's tapping into something real here. The fear that labor has traded its working-class roots for a slick, middle-class rebrand. Starmer's trying to win over new voters, sure. But at what cost? Because if you're leaving your traditional base feeling betrayed, you're playing a dangerous game. This whole mess isn't just about winter fuel payments or pensioners. It's way bigger than that. It's about what labor even stands for anymore. Under Starmer, the party's been trying hard to shake off its Corbin era vibes, moving toward a more centrist, polished image. But Abbott's not having it. Her attack isn't just a disagreement, it's a full-on callout, accusing Starmer of ditching labor's core values just to look good in the polls. The problem is, this internal fight isn't just staying behind closed doors. It's spilling out into the public eye. And that's where things get messy. Labor's supposed to be gearing up to take on the conservatives, but instead, it's fighting itself. This kind of drama doesn't exactly scream unified leadership to voters. If Starmer can't get his own house in order, how's he supposed to convince anyone he's ready to run the country? The cracks are showing, and they're only getting wider. Abbott's history with Starmer adds an extra layer to the drama. Remember when she lost the labor whip over those controversial remarks about racism? It wasn't a quick fix either. It took months of public and internal party pressure for her to get reinstated. That kind of public fallout leaves a mark. And it's probably why she's coming out swinging now. It's not just Abbott making noise. Pensioners all over the UK are furious. And honestly, who can blame them? These aren't just policy complaints. Their real-life struggles hitting some of Labour's core voters. Abbott's words might seem like a party squabble, but they're striking a chord with everyday people who feel let down. If Starmer doesn't pivot, this backlash could snowball, leaving him scrambling to win back trust he can't afford to lose. Abbott's right about one thing. This could really come back to bite Starmer. Losing the trust of pensioners isn't a minor hiccup. It's a massive red flag for Labour. They're a loyal voting bloc but they've got long memories, and if they feel betrayed, it's not something that'll be easily fixed. The big question here is whether Labour can sort out its own drama while dealing with the bigger picture. Starmer's leadership is getting grilled from all angles. This whole mess just highlights what feels like a bigger identity crisis for Labour, stuck between sticking to its roots and trying to keep up with modern politics. Starmer's trying to walk this tightrope, but Abbott's calling him out giving a voice to a chunk of the party that's feeling ignored. At the end of the day, this isn't just a spat between two MPs. It's a sign that Labour's got some serious cracks to fix. Starmer's not just fighting Abbott. He's battling to prove he can lead a party that actually gets its act together. He's got to show that Labour can stand for everyone, not just the urban elites or media darlings. Whether he can pull that off is anyone's guess, but one thing's for sure. Ignoring voices like Abbott's won't do him any favors. If you found this video interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.